So this lecture is going to introduce the RFA software to you. So we're going to talk a little bit about setup of a model, what the inputs look like, what kind of analyses you'll perform, um, and what the reservoir models look like and what the requirements are there, and then how to run an actual simulation. Because this, this is the culmination, right? Like we've been building up to this. We're developing our flow frequency curve, and then that gets input into this software and gets used as one of the inputs. So anyway. Okay, so this software, which is the long name, is Reservoir Frequency Analysis Software, or RMC RFA, um, was developed by the RMC to facilitate flood hazard analysis within the USA Dam Safety Program. And um, it's a stochastic modeling software that can be used to estimate reservoir frequency relationships. So let's discuss the basic framework of the software. RMC RFA is an event-based stochastic model, which means that the individual flood events are randomly generated and then routed through the reservoir to obtain a peak stage. So I said that really fast, but you have the notes, so make sure and refer back to this. Okay, so here's a picture to help. The foundation of the RFA model is a level pool rip reservoir routing model where the inflow minus the outflow is equal to the change in storage. So hopefully that equation is familiar to you from college. And RMC RFA uses a Monte Carlo simulation to account for the uncertainty in the inflow volume, um, frequency curve, the inflow hydrograph shape, the time of year when floods occur, and the antecedent reservoir stage at the beginning of a flood event. The main output of an RFA simulation is a stage frequency curve with uncertainty. So just to highlight this again, we're looking at the uncertainty in all four of the inputs, and we're using a basic um, level pool reservoir routing, um, really familiar, um, simple reservoir model uh, to develop our stage frequency curves. Okay, there are some settings that can be customized by selecting the RMC settings option in RMC RFA from the file menu. The application settings include the option to compress project file on close. Backup and recovery options are also available. Here's a pro tip. The default is set for five minutes for backups which can be really annoying if you do a lot of modeling because you get a little warning every five minutes that says, hey, I'm trying to back up your file and you're doing something. What are you doing? It doesn't actually say that, but you get the idea. Um, but you can change that um, default time window to something a little longer, like 30 minutes or half an hour. Sorry, 30 minutes is half an hour. Or 60 minutes is what I meant. Um, and that way it doesn't annoy you as much when you're trying to work through a model. So anyway, defaults can also be selected, including the project location folder the unit system, so you have English or SI units, and then um, the decimal digits that you are gonna see in your output tables for flow, elevation, and storage. And finally, the message settings can be adjusted. So it's maybe a little bit small here to see, but the default is that notes are gonna be in blue, and then warnings are gonna be in that light orange color, and then um, errors are gonna be shown in red. So if you don't have if you're missing some piece of information, it's, it's not gonna let you go forward, and it's gonna give you a warning or an error. Okay, um, to create a new project, you'll select File on the menu strip, and then select New Project, and then you'll create, um, the, the Create New Project box appears where you can enter the name of your project and a description if you so wish, and then you can define the unit system and select a folder where you're gonna save that project. So here is an example of what it looks like when you have that information filled in. Example dam, um, and I put some uh, <laughs> example dam, example river watershed, and then um, the default is US customary. Um, and then the project location is gonna default to a folder that it creates in your documents. So if you ever like forget to change your project file to save it some specific place, that's where you can find it. If you're, if you're like, where did I file? Where did I save that model? Um, it's gonna default to somewhere on your C drive in your users folder. Uh, project components can be added from either the menu strip at the top or the project explorer window on the left. And menu items are added by selecting them from the menu strip and then selecting new, then choosing what you're adding or by right clicking on them in the project explorer and selecting new. So if we had just created ourselves a new project, we're gonna now talk about what types, what the four types of input data that are required for an RMC RFA project. The first item is the discharge gauge where the user is gonna enter the period of record daily average inflow at the dam. So it might look something like this. 
This information is used late in the analysis to evaluate flood seasonality. And we'll get to all of those specific things a little bit later on in different lectures. The next is the inflow hydrograph shape, where the user enters multiple inflow hydrographs for large floods to account for uncertainty. And then the third item is a stage gauge where the user is gonna enter a period of record daily average reservoir stage data. It might look something like this. And this information is used to model the uncertainty in the antecedent reservoir stage at the beginning of a flood event. So in other words, what level was your reservoir at when the storm began? The fourth and final input is the volume frequency curve. This should look really familiar because we just spent a day and a half talking about this. So this is the, in, this is the input that I was referring to all that time. Um, the volume frequency curve is user entered and you're gonna be entering the mean standard deviation and skew and the ERL and then the duration. So that's, that duration is your critical duration. So it might be a three day or seven day or 66 day, depending on what your basin at, or your watershed is like. Um, and this information is going to be used to model the uncertainty. Um, and so specifically the volume frequency curve, this is going to be used to develop the uncertainty in both the random occurrence of flood events and the uncertainty in our estimate of the frequency curve. And I'll talk more about that in another, uh, another presentation. Okay, so now I'm going to shift. We were talking about input data. Now I'm going to talk about the analyses that you'll perform. There are three types of analyses that are required when you're running a simulation. Uh, the first is flood seasonality, and this is what this is going to use your daily flows from your discharge gauge to estimate the time of year when floods have occurred on a monthly basis in your basin. So we're actually using real data from your basin to determine when floods are happening. The second analysis is the reservoir starting stage duration, which uses the daily stages from the stage gauge to estimate the percent time reservoir stages are exceeded on a monthly basis. This is a really common analysis that h, &H folks do um, outside of RFA2. It's a duration analysis. So um, this might look familiar to many of you. Uh, the results of the first two analyses are used in an RFA simulation to randomly select a month for the flood event and then randomly generate a starting reservoir stage based on the duration curve for that month. The third analysis is the empirical frequency curve. The empirical frequency curve can be developed for both stage and discharge based on the stage and discharge gauge information. The empirical frequency curve provides a comparison between the results of a simulation and the observed events. So I'll say it in different words. Empirical is equivalent to observed. So when we develop our empirical frequency curve, we're just using plotting positions to plot our annual maximum data. Okay, so the, the third element here, we've talked about input data, we've talked about analyses, and now we're talking about the reservoir model that's used. A reservoir model is used to define the relationship between stage, storage, and outflow so that the floods can be routed through the reservoir and obtain a peak stage. Reservoir features can be entered for reference, including the top of dam, the spillway, and inflow design flood elevations. So if you have um, the design flood, you can put that in there, or if you have developed a PMF, then that's what you would enter as your stage for the um, inflow design flood elevation. We'll talk more about that later too. Okay. So before we run a simulation, the user must enter several required input parameters, simulation settings, and output options. Following a simulation run, the user can explore a variety of output plots and tables, which I'm going to show you examples of all of those. And this includes a stage frequency curve with uncertainty and several diagnostic and sensitivity plots. Chart editing options can also be accessed by right-clicking while hovering over the plot and then left clicking to select a specific item. Tables can be sorted by right clicking while hovering over a column heading and then selecting ascending or descending. And these pictures are probably fairly small for you um, up here, but if you look at them in your PDFs, you'll probably be able to see them a little bit better. Um, so that was a very quick overview of what RMC RFA is gonna do for us. Um, and each item that I discussed now is going to have its own individual lecture um, where we're going to go into a lot more detail.